this brings us to those two huge families of algorithms, the on-policy and off-policy ones. You might want to remember those terms. So let's uh, kind of recap on how they work, because the main intuition is what we just covered. The on-policy algorithms, like SARSA, they assume that their experience comes from the agent himself, and they try to improve agent's policy right now on this online stop. So the agent plays, and then it improves, and then it plays again. And what you want to do is you want to get uh, optimal strategy as quickly as possible. Off-policy algorithms, like Q-learning, as an example, they have slightly relaxed situation. They don't assume that the sessions you're obtained, uh, you're, you're training on are the ones that you're going to use when the agent is going to finally get kind of unchained and uh, applied to the actual problem. For example, you may train your agent uh, to, well, to, to find a policy for a bipedal robot to walk forward. In this case, for example, you might use a 3D simulation in which, key, in which you train your Q function with any exploration you want. So you can use this cheap uh, virtual reality simulation in which you train your uh, robot and in which you are not uh, uh, suffering any costs from your robot falling down. So you can set a large epsilon you can train for a long time without any regret, except for maybe CPU power. And then you want your agent to train not how to find, not how to behave optimally with this exploration of the large epsilon, but how to find an optimal policy when it's always asked to pick an optimal action. So basically, it first trains with this epsilon-based or maybe Boltzmann-based exploration, and then the exploration goes away, and it gets to pick optimal actions all the time. Another possible situation with off-policy algorithms, in which Q-learning is also uh, kind of uh, a good way to improve your reinforcement learning agent, is where you are training your agent on a policy which is different from his current policy. For example, you're, having, uh, you're trying to teach your self-driving car to drive in a particular situation, and you pre-train it, not on its own actions, but on actions of a driver, of an actual human pilot. In this case, you're probably saving yourself a lot of money and maybe some, well, some, uh, some CUs, in fact. Uh, the issue here is that at the beginning, your agent is not that close to optimal policies so that you are, uh, you are ready to trust him uh, control of an actual car. So you have actions that are not always optimal because humans are not uh, having the perfect reaction time, but they uh, are sometimes optimal, and you want your agent to train how to behave optimally from a human kind of inferior input. This can also be uh, easily traced on the Cliff world, but uh, this is actually one way you can drastically improve the performance of your algorithms later on. So again, we have a Q-learning, SARSA, and the expected value SARSA. So we just covered how Q-learning and SARSA relate to those on-policy, off-policy dualities. Now, the only thing remaining is how expected value SARSA works. The question here is, can you train expected value SARS in an off-policy scenario? Can you train it on uh, actions that are not, it, not the uh, actions taken under its current policy? Maybe, can you adjust it for maybe training on human data, pre-training on it before training on its own sessions? Well, right, you can. The issue with expected value SARS is that there is expectation, and you are free to set the probability distribution for the expectation any way you want. If you set, a, well, an expectation over what resembles the human probability of taking actions, if you train up a human policy and if you use its probabilities to pick an action, then you probably get an on-policy algorithm. If you take um, epsilon greedy policy and set an epsilon to something small that you're actually going to use after you deploy your algorithm, or even zero, you'll get something that's a lot like Q-learning, but it accounts for a different policy, the, the one that picks uh, optimal action with the set probability. And basically, it's, well, it's the most universal version. You set an expectation, if you set a probability of optimal action of one, you'll get expected value SARSA exactly equal to Q-learning, and therefore off policy. Okay, so there's also this neat question of uh, whether the cross-entropy method, the first reinforcement learning method we ever studied, uh, relates to on or off policy. And this is slightly controversial, but I want you to take a try at this one. Well, um, again, it's kind of uh, strange, but the issue here is that cross-entropy method technically requires you to sample sessions from your current policy. You can, of course, modify it in some way to allow it for uh, some different strategies, but if you train it on a policy which is clearly suboptimal, if you always pick samples from that policy, 
then there is no way you're going to improve the, uh, well, the selected elite sessions based on that. So technically, it's on policy only. Now let's see how we're going to exploit this uh, issue of on policy of policy algorithms to get some benefits for our practical problems. It's a very famous trick in reinforcement learning. In fact, you might have heard about it. The name is experience replay. And most people associate it with uh, uh, neural network based methods, but it's uh, kind of generic. It can be applied anywhere. The idea here is that you can train your agent not, on, uh, not just on its immediate uh, state action rewards next state pairs, but you can actually record its previous interaction and train it iteratively on uh, sessions that are uh, sampled from this large pool. So you're playing a game. Uh, this, say, again, you're trying to uh, make to convince the robot to go forward without falling. And instead of training, uh, instead of making one update on every step, what you do is you record, say, 10,000 previous steps, and you sample 100 random transitions there from this pool, this huge cylinder here. And you make usual Q value update, the QSA equals alpha times new Q value plus one minus alpha uh, times old Q value, given, your, uh, given the state's actions rewards the next state sampled from the pool. Now, of course, those samples, if you record your 10,000 previous iterations, are going to be probably worse than your current policy. So if, you're, if you just uh, learn to walk upright, then 10 times 10,000 10, iterations uh, before, you probably uh, haven't learned that yet, and you won't get samples where you are walking upright. But otherwise, this allows you to cheat your way into 100 times uh, more frequent updates. So making 100 kind of uh, uh, 100 virtual updates per one reel. So this gives you a lot of profit where sampling, where getting new SA errors prime is actually very expensive. For example, if you're using actual physical car or robot to get SA errors prime by actually moving it into a physical, uh, in a physical environment. This is actually a part of your bonus assignment, so you'll have a more detailed description of it later. Finally, this uh, idea of experience replay is going to be very popular along the neural network based, the deep reinforcement learning methods. We'll study those methods in the next week. Until then. <laughs>